Good evening, everybody. My name is Beth Perfecto, and I'm a faculty member here at the School of Natural Resources and Environment. And I'm here to introduce Aniket Aga. And Aniket joined us uh, recently. Uh, he's an assistant professor and Michigan Society of Fellow. He started in September. And he uh, just finished a PhD at Yale University in sociocultural anthropology. And the main topic that of his dissertation research is um, a, or focus on the debate, the ongoing debate in India related to genetically modified crops, especially food crops. And uh, he basically analyzed the relationship between uh, science and politics in what is today the world's largest democracy. And with that, I'm going to leave you. Oh, I'm f I forgot to say that he loves all food, but in particular, he's very fond of meatballs made with minced lamb and uh, made in Kashmir, Kashmiri style. And so with that introduction, um, and again, please. Thank you, Lily, for having me, and thank you, Yvette, for the introduction. Uh, so despite the title, I'm not here to suggest that Monsanto is poor in any financial sense. Uh, but perhaps uh, by the end of my talk, you may have a little bit of sympathy for it, maybe. Um, so as in the US, there's a fierce debate, uh, there's a fierce dispute in India almost every aspect of genetically modified crops, whether they help or harm farmers, whether they are safe for consumers, for the environment, whether they impact biodiversity negatively, should they be labeled, and so on and so forth. Insect resistant Bt, Bt is a soil dwelling bacterium, insect resistant Bt co cotton is the only GM crop formally approved in India. Much of the Bt cotton planted in India has Monsanto's genes in them. And for this reason, Monsanto is about as controversial in India as it is in the US. So one of the greatest tragedies of contemporary India is the unremitting number of suicides by farmers. Over 300,000 farmers have committed suicide in India, counting from 1995. 300,000 was the figure which was breached in 2014. We are now, and, and this trend has not stopped. The noted activist Vandana Shiva who I dare say is more popular in the West than she is in India, uh, blames Monsanto for these suicides. Other activists periodically organize Monsanto Quit India to coincide with the anniversary of the colonial Quit India movement of 1942, which was against the British. And since 2013, uh, when the Mons what, what in the US is called, was called the Monsanto Protection Act, so when that was passed in the US, there was a global march against Monsanto, and that has received enthusiastic participation in India as well. No wonder most conversations in India about GM crops invariably becomes a conversation about Monsanto. Yet, based on my research, today I would like to suggest that Monsanto's clout and importance in India may have been a bit exaggerated. And in fact, since the last decade, Monsanto and other transnational agribusinesses are actually on the defensive. They have come under attack not so much from noisy activists, but from their domestic partners, that is Indian seed companies, who are quite close to the Indian state. We know very little about Indian seed companies, yet these are the companies which supply seeds to commercial farmers. Few people appreciate that India has many respectable private seed companies for several decades. In fact, the BT cotton seeds sown in India uh, belong to domestic, are developed by domestic seed companies, not by Monsanto. Monsanto only provides its proprietary genes to be introgressed into these. Uh, for the first three years, that is between 2002 to 2005, Monsanto charged a hefty royalty for these genes. About 57% of the price of a packet of BT cotton seeds went to Monsanto. And partly for this reason, BT cotton seeds were about three times more expensive than ordinary cotton seeds. But in 2006, four years after BT cotton was released, several states enacted legislation capping the price of BT cotton. Basically, several states slashed BT cotton prices by about 50%. They also ordered antitrust proceedings against Monsanto. So, and Monsanto's royalties, as a consequence, were slashed to about 80%. 
slashed by 80%. Monsanto approached the courts, but the courts refused to provide any relief. To make matters worse, last year, eight companies just stopped paying royalties. They said, we are going to not pay any royalties anymore. Obviously, Monsanto sued them, but the courts are still working through this case. The coup de grace came in December 2015, when the Modi government uh, passed orders allowing the government not only to set prices for BT cotton, but to directly regulate the royalty itself. So, the, so what companies will pay Monsanto will now be decided by the government of India. Monsanto protested and said that they will walk out of India. The Minister of Agriculture said, please feel welcome to. You're most welcome to. <laughs> now, this is only a sliver of the politics of GM crops in India, but there is no question that in the last decade, Indian seed companies have lobbied the state to act against Monsanto and other transnational businesses. This does not mean Monsanto has no power, but there are many powerful entities in India. So if we think the Indian story is the Monsanto story, we need to think again. Thank you.